All right. Well, I, I recorded my first game, but it took over an hour and 20 minutes of uh, four against darkness. Fantastic. I have some of my own rules for hex crawling, uh, and I'll talk about that. I'm afraid the camera may run out, so I'm going to go through this as fast as I can. So I have my Broadland book, which includes all of my random tables and things for this. I rolled first, and I created my own rules for hex crawling with four against darkness. Uh, we started with our pawn. Where is my pawn? And I roll a table to see where in the world we start, and which just happens to be in my party notebook. Again, this is Jax, Ward, Simon, and Sheila. So we roll marching order. I mean, we roll for where the adventure started. We ended up starting in Calton, which is where Sheila and Ward are from. From there, I roll to see... Uh, uh, excuse me, where our quest uh, quest would be, which is 10, the quest ended up being, um, the quest ended up being, uh, 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 let peace reign, and so basically, uh, I decided that Sheila, from her sisterhood, were told they needed to go solve a thing somewhere, so then I had to roll where, I rolled 6, Rock Island, which requires that you secure a boat, which is all the gold our our heroes have to start. So we all start with no gold, having to spend all of our gold combined to secure a boat, and we have to go to Rock Island to achieve the quest of Let Peace Reign. We don't know what that means except for one thing. Uh, to, to achieve this adventure, that means you have to somehow uh, non-violently negotiate three encounters. So, using my rules for hex crawling, we set out with Jax, our barbarian, in the country as our marching order, leads us on the boat. He successfully navigates us halfway. Simon, our halfling, successfully fishes to give us sustenance for the night. The next morning, we successfully get, I mean, that was the sustenance. Uh, he then successfully navigates us to Rock Island. Then I roll on the random table in my Broadlands book. Uh, a random encounter at Rock Island, and it was a Rock Island abandoned mine. Perfect. That gave us our first dungeon. And, of course, we set out into that dungeon with a marching order for our dungeon, which is Ward leading the way. And then we slowly rolled up uh, every random room and what's in those rooms, etc. Very cool. We were able to defeat... Where's my notebook? We were able to, we suffered some serious uh, damage. We had, uh, ultimately, we had to fight fungi folk. They would not negotiate. We killed them pretty quick. However, we did have some damage, and we did have somebody poisoned. Uh, then we ran into trolls, which we fleed from, which gave us one of our first nonviolent encounters. So that gave us, uh, well, two, first we actually ran into a quest in one of the main corridors. We accepted a quest from the Lady in White. That quest was give her a potion of healing. So that gave us our first of the three nonviolent resolutions. We've accepted a quest. That was one. Check. Second, we had to run and escape from the trolls. That gave us a second nonviolent encounter. For, and then finally, at the end, as we traverse through and around all kinds of things, finding scrolls and having blessings and having battles, we actually ended up battling uh, a giant centipedes, which we killed pretty quick. We be defeated a group of goblins who would not negotiate. We then were attacked in a wandering monster check as we were backtracking the barbarian, waylaid by a catalopus, and we ultimately killed it, but the barbarian took some damage there. And then we, we, we uh, uh, headed, all, again, all the way back up, making wandering monster checks as you backtrack, back around here, ended up here where we, had, we found our orc boss, level 5, and again, we chose to flee, the Barbarian being last in line at the rear, I mean, uh, uh, Ward being first into the room and last out, was damaged by the Brute Boss, but we did escape. And I, again, I, accept, I, I accepted those as uh, uh, actual quest uh, resolution, because they were ultimately non-violent encounters. Not ideal for what it suggests here, but I'll count them as I only had so much time. It was, a, it was an hour and 20 minute video. Maybe I'll put it up or maybe I'll edit it and put it up in pieces so people can see how I did it. But I wanted to talk about it. So we ultimately got out and then we had to navigate across. We managed to do that. Sustenance by the uh, halfling failed. He failed to fish successfully for us. Therefore, everybody took damage. The next morning, he successfully did fish, which helped us reduce the lost damage from uh, having not eaten the day before. And then our barbarian, unfortunately, got lost which required that second night of sustenance. Then our barbarian got on track. We returned to Calton successfully. We reported to Sheila of the Sisterhood 
uh, about our adventure to Rock Island and peace did indeed lead the way and that's it we were able to secure three out of ten experience by defeating three minion pluses you have to kill minions to achieve XP you, vermin do not count so the centipedes did not count the trolls we didn't defeat we escaped from and the orc brute boss we did not get XP for we had to escape from him so we fleed from two but they gave us two of our of our quest things and that's it we returned home successfully nobody died however uh, let's see here Jax is down to six out of eight life uh, Ward is down to six out of seven life uh, Simon is down to three out of four and he has a fireball scroll and uh, Sheila is down to three out of five and she used a heal during the adventure to heal up Ward the, the warrior and she used a bless to take a curse off the barbarian uh, which was a cursed magic item which, which uh, hit the Barbarian, which was perfect narratively. It happened randomly, but it was perfect narrative, as the Barbarian would have absolutely hated and disdained the magic. So they were able to get two bl bl Blessing Scrolls and a Fireball scr uh, Staff, which we could sell or use. Uh, she could keep and use the Blessing Scrolls, but we have those. Plus, we managed to get from the Goblins two gold pieces, which Simon is carrying. And that resolved our very first adventure in the Four Against Darkness. This is fantastic. Uh, absolutely loved it. Now, I'm using color-coded dice for my adventures. So, in the wilderness, the Barbarian led, followed by our Choleric, followed by Simon, and followed at the rear guard by our Warrior. In the dungeon, it uh, changed. I have different marching orders. So, in the dungeon, it was our Warrior leading the way followed by our cleric and our halfling using one weapon carrying a torch or a lantern and our barbarian was last so all the dungeon crawling happened in this order he led the way torch bearer or lantern the halfling at the end and this is what I did and these are our attack dice these were our defense dice so when we attacked creatures we rolled all of these dice when they attacked us we defended ourselves with these dice when I searched or when we did the rooms I would use a neutral die and it would be the leader of the party that would expose, uh, 546 would expose the new room or the new corridor. Then I would roll these for what's in the room or the corridor, adding them up. If we searched, we used the uh, halfling's uh, lantern to search, right? So I used color-coded dice, depending on what I was doing. It made it, it helped me see the halfling doing the searching. Uh, when we uh, looted bodies, we used the uh, uh, lantern with the neutral die. When we were backtracking for the random wandering monsters, we would roll the neutral die uh, to see if any wandering monsters waylaid us from behind. Fantastic game. Using color-coded dice for my characters worked great. I used, uh, of course, my broad lens at system agnostic adventure world hex crawl. Uh, I use the same rules ultimately for all my games. However, I did specify particular rules for navigation, sustenance, and uh, how to start the game. Where on the map we start the game, because the next adventure we might find ourselves in the Great Ruins, and, it, and the quest ends up being something at the Dark Woods, which means we're going to have to go from here all the way across to the Dark Woods before I can even begin this so that could take two or three adventure days uh, just to get to the dark woods so I have a random table for that and then of course uh, I have uh, rules for navigation which will lead to basically a wandering monster check so if he fails with navigation it's a wandering monster check just like that right so uh, if whoever's leading the party in the country or in the dungeon now in the dungeon you don't make a navigation check you do what these rules say so I use these rules for the dungeon but I'm using these rules for Broadland and then of course uh, before we started in Calton I had to roll to see the nature of Calton Calton was in normal there was no uh, negative feelings or, or celebratory feelings happening in Calton uh, Calton was in its normal behavior which is from my Broadlands book and there you have it. It worked great. Everyone survived. We got three experience points out of ten. And now the next time I do it, I'll be a little faster. I'll know a little better. Uh, I did draw it uh, as I went, which takes time. And you got to kind of twist and fit the new room in. Uh, it got a little sloppy. I haven't got yet the, the uh, short, uh, there's shorthand for what you're supposed to mark on the map. There's a shorthand guide for what you work. So escape would have been written. 
uh, would have been written in those rooms we escaped in, uh, where we found monsters, where we found scrolls would be written in those rooms. So I've got to get better at uh, writing, and I'm, I'm a horrible graphic, I'm a horrible artist, so this is probably not ideal. Uh, index cards would be perfect for this. Make every room that's in the book on the index cards, and then you could just lay out the start, and you could put index cards as you traversed, and then you could make notes in your notebook as to whether you found a scroll on that index card, etc. But drawing is fun, uh, but uh, you can see how quickly it got it got busy with information. Again, uh, I think the next I think the next uh, adventure I'm automatically going to try to finish this quest for the Lady in White. She met us. She offered us a quest for a potion of healing. We accepted it. That counted as one of our one of our uh, game quest things, a, a, a peaceful encounter. But we have to actually do it. So I think that'll be my next adventure, and I'll roll to see where this potion of healing may be. And then that may mean it's in the old ruin, and we'll have to traverse to the old ruin, and then we'll have to go into the old ruin. And then, of course, we'll have to do a dungeon crawl to face a boss to get the potion of healing. And then my third adventure could be us going from here to Rock Island. So I can create a campaign of just connecting the adventures together. We'd have to return to Rock Island to this location and give her her potion of healing. And I would count that as a quest. So now I could actually begin to make quests. Instead of randomly rolling quests, we have a quest. We need to find this potion of healing. So now all I'll do is roll to see where would that be. And then once we go from here, we'd have a quest to return to Rock Island. And now I'm actually, quests are actually occurring organically based on that very first adventure. Thanks for watching. Good day.